with the increase in the severity and the frequency of a lot of different environmental problems like drought, flooding, uh, the size of the dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico, and climate change. There's a world of a lot of conversation on what people can do to help mitigate the impacts of all these different disasters. One of the things people often talk about is sequestering carbon. Sometimes it's in the form of trees and forests. Uh, other times it's about sequestering carbon in our soils. There are a couple different ways that people talk about sequestering carbon in our soils, and one of those is through mechanical means, setting up machines that will capture carbon from the air and put it into the soils. For me, it seems like they would take a world of a lot of energy when there are more productive ways of doing that, and one of those is through sequestering carbon in the soils of our agricultural lands. I'm Rob from Dowdle Family Farms, and over the last 10 or 12 years, I've spent a lot of time and energy trying to increase the organic matter and the carbon content of the soils in the gardens, in the yards where I've lived, and in the soils of some of the pastures on our farm. Let me say that I'm not an environmentalist, I'm not a climatologist. One of the things that I am, though, is a farmer. The first question that we may want to ask is how much carbon can our soils hold? Well, if you look at increasing the organic matter of your soils down to the point where it's 10 inches deep from the top of the soil by 1% organic matter, that'll hold roughly 8 tons of carbon. If you increase that depth down to 30 inches, then it'll hold 24 tons or so of carbon. However, if you can increase the carbon content of your soil from 1% to 3% down 30 inches deep, that can sequester 72 tons of carbon into the soil if you increase your soil organic carbon by 3%. That is a huge amount, especially if it were to be applied to the 900 something million acres of agricultural lands in the United States. And that doesn't even begin to talk about the organic content of the soils in our yards, our golf courses, and many other areas. For a climatologist or an environmentalist, they may find that really, really fascinating. But the thing is, is for farmers, increasing the organic matter of our soil can pay huge dividends. If you have a 3% rise in organic matter down to 30 inches deep in your soils, that can hold over 120,000 gallons of water and save it for when the soils need the water more. That's the equivalent of over four inches of rain. Ask any farmer whether they produce livestock on pastures or if they produce row crops, if they could use four inches of rain in July or August or whenever their dry months are, and they will tell you without a shadow of a doubt that it will make a huge, absolutely tremendous difference to the productivity of their crops. However, that's not all. In addition to holding that additional water, the carbon content of the soils and the organic matters can also improve the ability of the soil to hold different nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. And, and the difference there for the farmers means that you have more productive crops, but you can also reduce your inputs like fertilizers and different nutrients because the soil holds more of those and they don't leach out. Increasing the carbon content of the soils on our farm not only sequesters carbon and makes the environmentalists happy, but the biggest thing is it makes that huge difference for farmers because they produce more, they have fewer inputs, and the profitability is greater. However, there's even greater benefit that people often don't consider. One of the benefits of increasing the carbon content of our soils is that they are able to absorb more water faster. Most farmers will tell you that if you get a four inch rain in one hour, most of that four inches worth of rain is going to run off into a field. They'll also tell you that if you get one inch of rain spread over 12 or 24 hours, they call that a good soaking rain, and that helps the crops much more than four inches of rain in one hour because the water is able to be withheld in the soil. By increasing the organic matter and the carbon content of our soils, what happens is that those soils are then able to hold more water and absorb it much faster than just a standard clay soil would be able to on its own.
So what that means for people downstream is that there's less water running into the rivers during those gully washing rains. One of the benefits of increasing the carbon content and organic matter of our soils that's often overlooked is that they hold more nutrients. That's great for the farmer, but that's also great for the environment because then what happens is that those nutrients are not in the watershed. They're not in the rivers, and they ultimately don't end up in the oceans and create problems like dead zones in the Gulf of Mexico. It is a win-win for everyone around. Now, there are also a lot of health benefits to uh, crops grown in soils high on organic matter, and, and I won't get into that right now. But the thing that is most important about sequestering carbon in our soils is that it is a win-win for the environmentalist. It is a win-win for the farmer because it increases productivity, it reduces cost inputs, and it's a win-win for the environment as well because there's less flooding, which reduces financial costs associated with flooding, and it also helps productivity in dead zones in the Gulf of Mexico. And by now, I hope you're asking the question, how do we increase the carbon content of the soils in our agricultural lands, but also in our yards and on our golf courses and many other areas? And if so, that's great. However, before we answer that question, we must take a look at how we lose the carbon content of our soils in the first place so that when we increase the carbon content of our soils, we don't immediately lose that content. So check out the next video right here and we'll see you next time.